Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're continuing the three pound robot build. Now let's take a look at what we have here. I, as you can see, I've been printing. I started printing TPU in my last 3D printing video. I did have the pleasure of attending Sunday of the July NHRL event, which was great fun. Really, really recommend it. One of the best events of any kind I've ever seen. So we've upgraded these, which were the PETG PC blend with TPU. These are obviously different designs and not my final design. This is the newer one, but I've been continuing to update that, that design. I kind of wanted a little cross ramp to go across here, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Another thing knocked off the list is these, which are iterations of wheel guards. This is the first one, not quite big enough. Then the second one, which was also not quite big enough. And then I printed two of these because they'll definitely work as a first working revision. And as you can see, they fit into holes I've already designed into the side pieces. I do still have to mill aluminum versions of these side pieces, which I have the material for as well as the end mill for. However, due to the complexity of the part, I really want to mill it in one operation if I can. And that's going to require me to use better software on my mill PC. So I think I'm going to upgrade to Linux CNC However, my mill PC is my old overclocking PC, which happens to be water-cooled, and it has not been serviced in quite a few years now. So I'm not sure what's in there. I probably should clean the whole thing out, so that might be part of the next video. But as you can see, we have these wheel guards, which are starting to look really good. They're just simple. They don't extend to the floor but I can still alter my, alter my wheel size lower if I want. That would obviously save me some weight, some rear protrusion here. I think I'm just gonna stick with these for the first revision, consider the wheel guard part done, and move on to something else. Now the weapon. This is pretty important. This is what I have and it was basically designed around this tube. After attending NHRL in person, I'm not so sure going in with a weapon like this is the best design. Do I think you could get away with a quarter inch thick aluminum weapon if you had a really well-designed you know, encapsulation as well as maybe steel teeth protecting the aluminum? Um, yeah. Is it still going to get chewed up? Yeah, definitely. They, they hit much harder than you think they would. I definitely don't think I want to use this weapon on this shaft in any way supporting the weapon. It, it's guaranteed to destroy this motor. I think my, a better bet is going to be to decouple this outrunner, to decouple the magnetic ring and embed it in the weapon and then have the weapon on a through shaft which is going to add rigidity to this whole front end and probably drill out the motor so that I can have the shaft go all the way through and have this spin not on the shaft but on the weapon and the weapon will spin on the shaft. That's probably my best bet for making this setup as strong as I can. Now, another thing I could do is I could make these end plates thicker. I made them almost as thin as I possibly could to jam everything in, make as dense a robot I could. I do have a lot more ground clearance than a lot of robots, so that may be an issue. 
but my main failure points as it sits right now would probably be the weapon design. So I need to keep working on that, finalize the design some. That's going to be my major hurdle if I want to compete this year for NHRL. There are two more events before the championships. I am going to print out some thicker ones of these, probably another eighth inch thick, and then we'll go with that for the fronts. These attachments are not the final design. As you can see, I have some countersunk fasteners there. I have a regular fastener here. These are extra long. I'm just trying out things, but my final design is I'm going to mill hex pockets for some M4 nuts and have them screw in from this side. That way, everything can be serviced individually. But really, my next steps are going to be making the sides and the weapon. I didn't originally plan on having a through bolt, but I believe that the strength may be necessary, especially with as thin as my side plates are here. They're, yes, they're half inch thick this way, but they're only an inch this way, and they're milled down to about a quarter inch in the section where the motor goes.